Today we're going to talk about a fellowship of believers and what makes fellowship so wonderful and so possible for us all. Um, I didn't know exactly what to speak on um, last night at 10 o'clock because I was busy doing things the whole week. Um, I was busy having lunch with Zephy and Mac and Clara and and people from Santa Rosa and as a group of people getting together. And then yesterday I was busy with my grandkids and my daughter-in-law at the beach, at, at Stenson Beach and all of that. And let's see, what in the world was I doing Sunday and Monday? And oh, But anyway, it seems like I was busy doing things with people all week long. And I thought, Lord, I, I don't have the slightest idea. In fact, Karen asked me last night when I came back from Stenson Beach, uh, we were waiting on our daughter, daughter-in-law, and she says, well, do you, do you know what you're speaking on tomorrow? And I said, you know, I don't have the slightest idea what I'm speaking on. But I realized why I didn't have the slightest idea. is because I had been busy fellowshipping with people, and then I got to thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, that is what I really need to talk about, the fellowship of believers, and how and who and what it's all about and what brings us together in a fellowship. Because we can get so busy, I can get so busy doing things with, with material things uh, that you forget about people. And uh, just as Jeanette was about to begin her, her song today, before the, when the first note, obviously Charles didn't know exactly what she was singing or didn't appear to, with the first note he knew exactly what the song was and it's, oh yeah. You know, it was like, this, this is exactly what I want to hear, and I need to hear. It's that connection. So today, you know, we want to look at who, what, when, and how, and for what reason do we become a fellowship of believers? What does that look like? Um, is there any common ground of a fellowship of believers? Is there a prevailing attitude as well of, prev- of believers? Is there a central focus And how is it made possible? And what we're going to do is take a look at a passage of scriptures from the book of Hebrews. Uh, You think about believing, you think about Hebrews. That certainly ties in the Old Testament, Old Testament belief system, and New Testament together because we recognize that it was a bit of the difficulty that the early New Testament church had. They were coming out of the old into the new, Uh, They were trying to understand it all. They were a bit fearful that they were giving up the ways in which they had gone in times past and that they may not be pleasing God in all of these things. And so the author writes about the new way of life, a new way of believing in the book of Hebrews. Now, we're going to take a look at chapter 10 uh, of, of the book of Hebrews. Not the whole chapter, but we're going to begin here. In verse 19 of chapter 10, and we're going to just go through this verse by verse to help us to understand about what makes up a fellowship of believers. Now, Mac read to us uh, from the Old Testament a psalm that talked about, you know, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And so we, are, we believe in that. Uh, and as Mac said, he wanted to add the word peace. Because there is something about uh, the fellowship of believers that also, not only do you have unity, uh, because you also have peace. And I say that because it's so easy to be kind of an authoritarian, and you get the look of unity when you really don't have unity. Everything You have uniformity, but not unity. And what God is after, I believe, is not just uniformity. He is not after a bunch of yellow pencils. And with that thought in mind, I would remind us that that is one of the beautiful things that God has given us, is that we're all a bit different. And when we gathered together for our luncheon over in Novato this past week, you, you looked around the crowd, and it's, we were all quite different. Now, Ruth who was 89, and Zephi, who was 82, they were different than the rest of us in as much as they were older. But they were different from one and each other <laughs> because one was black and one is white. 
then they were different from me, from male to female, and older and youth, liar and <laughs> truth. But you, you look around that, that group of people sitting there and fellowshipping with one another and enjoying food and fellowship, there is a commonality. And as Zephy said this morning, she certainly enjoyed getting together with her little family last week. As we enjoy getting together with one another because it is a fellowship of believers. So we're going to take a look at what it tells us here in the book of Hebrews. So verse 19, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. Now that's, that's as far as we're going to go for right now. We're going to take a look at this. When we think about the brotherhood of believers, let's take a look at what we see here in this one single verse. Now, we're not going to look at all the the Greek words and all that. We'll just take a a simple look at it. But we find at least four things right here. One is we find brothers. Brethren. Brethren, we could use the word family. There is a connection. There is a commonality that they have. And it's not just Hebrews, but it's humanity that you find in the book of Hebrews. Of that. So we have brethren. That speaks to who we are. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, as we said. Whether we're young or old, black or white, you know, whatever the race, we are brethren. And we're going to see how that we are brethren, and that makes us family. Interesting enough, we all know with family, we're willing to, because at times we have to put up with one another. That is true in marriage. You know, you marry somebody and then all of a sudden you find, well, I didn't know that they were this way. I didn't know that they snored. You know, it wasn't a big problem before, you know. But now it's all of a sudden a a difficulty. I, I didn't realize this or I didn't realize that about them. The little quirks that we all have. And we're all a little quirky, to say the least, that we all have that. So, but it is this brethren. Now, that's one aspect of what brings us into a, as it say, the fellowship of believers. Second is, that's mentioned here, is boldness. So, since we have confidence to enter, okay, the, the fellowship of believers are individuals who have boldness. And it certainly speaks to the acceptance that we understand and the sense of security that we ought to have. And Hebrews is talking about a sense of security that we have. We have a confidence, and I say a confidence to do something, to enter the most holy place. Now, in Old Testament time, we realize you could not enter only one person. One day a year could enter the most holy place. But we're doing things that are well beyond that. We have confidence to enter that, which means that we, there's a feeling of acceptance and there's a confidence to do that. Now, we're able to do that in prayer. We're able to enter into the presence of God. In fact, we, we request of God to, to come into His presence and we want Him to be present with us as well. So there is this confidence. But not just one person is able to do this. In the New Covenant, all are able to enter into this holy place. Men and women are able to enter into this holy place. Dumb and smart. You know? Yeah, young and old. The whole, the whole, that we are able. And we, and in doing this though, what it is telling us as far as the fellowship of believers is that we can do this in confidence, that you're welcome. Worldwide Church of God in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto are located in the San Francisco Bay Area, regarded as the most prosperous region in the United States. We believe Jesus Christ when he proclaimed in Matthew 6.24 that serving God is more important than serving mammon. We welcome everyone to come and worship and fellowship every Saturday at the times listed on your screen and on our website, worldwidechurchofgod.com.